whatever we think about creating products or services, we think about making having them have an outcome that is has high quality and is also a very understood and precise process that is cost effective. Quality has a cost associated with it, and the operations being efficient and effective are an important part of that cost. One of the things to be thinking about as we talk about all of these various processes and organizations um, is how how the product moves through the system. You have the inputs, you have the transformation, you have the outputs. There's a, there's a product that's coming, starts as inputs, begins to be assembled or, or, or put together, and then becomes an output at the end. How does that flow work? Two things to be thinking about along those lines. One of them is routing. How does the product go from one stage to another stage? Starts out as inputs that get collected in the warehouse. Those get put into some sort of an assembly process. They move through that process, and then they move to an output. So there's a routing problem of moving materials and things around. And then when that happens, when the resources are available, this, how that can be scheduled, the timing of it, and making sure there are assets that have to be used for the process of transformation are available at the right points in time. That's the scheduling process. So we talk about those um, next. In that process, there's a technique called a PERT, which is, is, is a way of charting or laying out that the, what major activities have to occur, or what sequence they have to occur, when there might be uh, some sort of a critical path, one area where uh, if it gets choked up, you could have problems moving forward. Um, and then figuring out the time for each. And then from that, you can figure out what is a critical path that the, the, the particular product or service goes through so you can make sure that you don't let a bottleneck occur at that critical path. Here's an example. You have these hamburgers um, in a fast food joint. Um, you know you're going to be making hamburgers and you can make a lot of them. But the problem you have is that it takes a lot longer for the patty to grill than for you to set up the bun and put on all the sauces and the lettuce and all that sort of thing. So you, you know that that particular step takes longer, so maybe you put an oven that'll cook five or six hamburgers at a time, um, and then you have a little bit of backlog when the hamburgers come out of the grill, but you could be making five of them or whatever, and so you understand that you don't have someone standing around waiting each time, but you've managed that bottleneck. And you could do step by step by step and try to figure all of those out. These are all extremely useful um, techniques. This uh, a part chart and there's a Gantt chart, which is a timing project management type skills, uh, which people use in operations to try to be effective and to manage quality. Quality, like efficiency and cost, is an important element because it adds an attribute to the product where people know what they can expect and they get what they expect, which is what they want. It reflects how much it meets the demands or the requirements of the, of the, uh, of the customers. Um, it's also not so easy to figure out. So you have to understand what customers want, and you also have to understand the routing and the scheduling and the quality of raw materials, all of those things, and how they come together for a final product. Quality management is an important element of what businesses do. That's called quality control. That is, understanding what quality means on the one hand, and then how making sure all of your processes that you have in place live up to that quality standard. One method for this is called statistical process control, which means you understand that any process, making jeans, making hamburgers, there's going to be variance. Maybe the hamburgers don't all come out exactly the same. Maybe the buns don't all look exactly the same. Maybe the sauces aren't put on exactly the same. But there is a level of quality that's expected, and there's a variance around that. Everyone doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want them to vary too far from something close to that, to some acceptable level. And you manage to that acceptable level and figuring out what variations are reasonable or expected and acceptable is what statistical quality control is all about. You want to make sure that, like for example, we're talking about jeans and you're stitching on the pockets or whatever, and there's some stitching around there. Of course, the machines are doing that. But sometimes maybe it messes up and you get a whole bunch of extra stitches. Um, you want that to happen rarely. And when it does, you want it to be caught by the inspectors so that, that if there's a process problem in the system, you can correct it quickly. Right? 
and that's what the idea of knowing what is acceptable and what isn't, um, so that you you and what's the range of acceptable outcomes is what this statistical process control is really all about to try and understand what you need to change and what you need to fix. Organizations that put this process together have this idea of total quality management, top quality management, which means that to TQM, it's usually called, which means that you have a process throughout your organization to look at quality and how interactions at each between each stage of the process and across the process, how they conform to a level of quality. So customer interactions have a certain level of quality. The uh, dealing with the purchasers, the, the equipment that you get from purchasing that comes into the warehouse, that is already inspected for quality. Your contracts with the, with the suppliers require that there's a certain level of quality and that that flows through the system. Um, it's done often by benchmarking, which means you look at other companies and what they do, how they manage process, uh, their quality control, what quality is for their, from their purchasing contracts and the like and within their process and put, build that process entirely into the system from the beginning. That's the, um, the notion of total quality control. Going, making sure that, that the product that the customer expects at the output comes through at the output by understanding how each step in the process contributes to the quality of the outcome. And if it's not at a certain level of quality, how that can cause the outcome to have no quality or the lower quality and therefore be pulled from the system um, or fixed before it moves on to the next step in the process, the total quality control. Uh, this whole idea of quality and managing quality is uh, been institutionalized in these what's called ISO um, certifications. ISO 9000 means that a factory or an installation of some kind meets this, the quality, total quality management standards that are set up and certification is in place. Um, ISO 1400 means that they have their environmental conditions in place. They there's certain certification requirements that they, they meet, and so they leave the minimal footprint that we were describing um, earlier in the discussion. The idea here is that these certifications allow me, as a purchaser or as a, as a company that is using contract manufacturing or contract distribution, to know for sure that this facility will be meeting certain standards because this certification requires that. So if I need to have my genes manufactured, I can go to a, fa a factory in Singapore, and it's ISO 9000. I negotiate a price. I know their quality is going to be up to snuff because it's, sort of, it's certified by this ISO body, and they need to keep that certification so they continue to manufacture at a certain quality level. I can go to Argentina and find a plant that's ISO 9000, and then I know that that's going to be of this level of quality. So now I can negotiate on price and I can negotiate on distribution costs and currency levels and get the best deal and maybe buy some from one factory and some from another factory and I'll know when they come to me for my distribution and, and, uh, and the like um, that they're at the right level of quality. And of course I inspect all that. Part of my inspection regime is when things come into the warehouse, I have them inspected uh, as they come in the warehouse from both locations. And if there are quality problems from one of my suppliers, I can get reparations or I can change suppliers. But these ISO ideas, certification has helped this global supply chain because now I know that I don't have to have worked with this company before to understand their quality. Uh, they have this certification that they're trying to maintain. All throughout this process, you actually have to physically check things. That's what inspection is all about. When a car comes off the assembly line and the new BMW comes off the assembly line, someone inspects it, makes sure the lights work and the electronics work and all of that sort of thing. Um, but you can't, in some cases, with, when you're producing hundreds and hundreds of, of boxes of cereal, for example, hundreds of thousands of them, you can't check every box because sometimes you destroy the product to check it. You have to open the box up and check the cereal at the cereal boxes. So you do this thing called sampling where you just check some percent and managers that are quality managers figure out the right percent to sample to make sure that you're you have a high enough uh, expectation that the products coming through will be of higher quality and you figure all of that out and implement it. And the sampling can be done all at every stage of the manufacturing process 
when the um, Cheerios are being made and they're put in the box before they get sealed, someone might come in and cart a sample or two away to make sure that however that process is working, that it's working up to snuff at that stage. So you know that when it goes into the next stage, you will have um, that. What's happened before won't be the quality problem if quality shows up later in the process. And that's this idea of sampling. So increasingly, companies are making their competitive advantage. It becomes almost a necessary way to compete to have these high quality standards in what's called integrated operations and supply chain management. Lots of technology using this, um, lots of statistical quality control. You want to go to companies that do these kinds of things because they really are the future. A lot of the, um, uh, the older businesses that have been around a long time haven't fully engaged this sort of process and companies like Walmart and Target and those kinds of, uh, of firms, Amazon, that do these sorts of things. Um, on one hand, you say it's not fair because they're so big, but on the other hand, they do things that are actually more effective from a business perspective going forward. So with that, we'll wrap up this discussion about operations and management. And um, hopefully all these various pieces sort of fit together into a perspective that says, Operations is inputs to transformation to outputs, and all the things that occur inside help us lower the cost, manage them effectively, and make sure that the outputs have a high quality and that they meet that every single case or the statistically expected amount of outcomes meet the quality standards that the customers need. And that's the process of operations. Lots of good jobs, lots of hard work goes into doing this well. We'll see you next time.